All right, uh, we had another inflation report today that shows on the wholesale level, that is the level before it gets to you and me on the retail uh, price level, that, that continues a trend of declining of prices. What we've seen certainly on the retail front is 12 consecutive months of the inflation rate and the increase in the rate going down. In fact, in the latest numbers, uh, the lowest it's been in two years. Jared Bernstein joins us right now. Jared is now the newly minted uh, chairman of the President's Council of Economic Advisors. Kind enough to join us. I should probably call you Mr. Chairman now, Jared, but thank you. Very good to have you. That's fine. Uh, you can call me Jared. No, I'll go with Chairman. It sounds august. But let me ask you about that because as you know, Chairman, you have the Republican candidates running around saying inflation is still a problem. Uh, things are costing more than people are making. So you can put all the spin on this you want. Inflation is still a problem. What do you say? Our work is not done when it comes to helping households with this challenge. Uh, but the amount of progress we've made is pretty remarkable. And you just took us through it. 12 months in a row of uh, slower inflation, down two thirds. You know, if you and I were talking a year ago on this very date, we'd be talking about inflation that was two thirds higher than it is now. And, you know, when you have that kind of a trend, uh, you're talking about uh, relief from a, 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 set, a set of price pressures that were uh, much higher uh, before than they are now. One of the other uh, outcomes of these uh, recent dynamics is that real wages are up. The buying power of the hourly wage of working people, say middle wage workers, that's up 1.6 percent over the past year. So that kind of progress is giving housing some breathing room. The price of, the price of gas down a dollar fifty over the past year. That's real breathing you, but but breathing room. But our work is not done, Neil. We're we're going to keep pushing. Got it. And of course, if I wanted to compare to the food prices, those real wage gains evaporate. But I I, I wonder whether <laughs> you're taking a bow for something the Federal Reserve is doing, as you know. Uh, they've been aggressively raising rates, and at the rate they're going, they're going to do it again at the end of this month. That's what's causing this to go down. Nothing you're doing. What do you say? Well, I think if we, you and I were out here talking about rates that were 9 and 8 and 7 percent as opposed to 3 percent, uh, you'd probably be suggesting that we had something to do with that. Uh, so uh, I, I think when it goes the other way, we got to be kind of symmetrical there. Um, look, I think when you look at the uh, uh, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't understand that. I mean, the, the fact is that the, the, the rates are going up. It, it's having the corresponding effect of pushing some prices down because demand is hit by that rate rise or, or is that yeah, so, not so there's no question that the Fed is in the mix but I also was was going to tell you if you look at one of the uh, important aspects of where we've seen some real relief for households on the inflation side it's in the area of goods okay so core goods inflation came in I believe it was uh, a, a negative sign slightly declined last right. month you're talking about and, without volatile food and energy price swings right yeah, well, okay. I'm actually talking about goods here. So okay. specifically, the things that come through ports. Well, if you go back to uh, 2021, President Biden stood up the Supply Side Disruption Task Force. He recognized uh, right out of the gate that if we were going to help people deal with some of the global inflationary pressures from the pandemic, we were going to have to unsnarl our supply chains. And we got to work on that. And our fingerprints are on some of those improvements. Obviously, we worked closely with the private sector workforce in the ports, particularly on the West Coast. So now that we're seeing supply chain unsnarl ups, that's showing up in lower goods prices. And I think our fingerprints are legitimately on that. I talked about the gas price down $1.50 over the past year. Of course, when the president released uh, all those barrels of oil from the Strategic Reserve, that made a difference. And now we can talk about the Inflation Reduction Act and the fact that lower costs for prescription drugs, for insulin, for uh, 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 the drugs themselves, for prescription drugs themselves, uh, those prices are, are going to be knocked down by the Inflation yeah, Reduction Act. That's not, I do that's, think our that, fingerprints that part, are, that are on those issues. That part isn't happening yet. I mean, that's a hope. But uh, you, you do have your fingerprints on trillions of dollars worth of added spending. And in retrospect, looking back at all of that spending, do you think that created the monster that the Fed is dealing with now? No, I think that uh, when it comes to the fiscal outlook, I think you really need to look at the deficit reduction that this president has presided over. I mean, $1.7 trillion of deficit reduction in his first two years. He just signed legislation to take that deficit down another trillion. And of course, there's $2.5 uh, but trillion. Debt, but, but the, Jared, our total debt is, is trillions higher than it was when the president took office. So, uh, so is I think that you really have to look to at. 
Well, I think you have to look at what direction is the president's proposals going in when it talks about uh, fiscal uh, rectitude, and I think you should but probably compare that. But it's the proposals, Chairman. That's why I'm, uh, I'm, I'm curious because a lot of it could just be the effect of coming out of COVID and all the spending for COVID and a lot less spending for COVID. So I'll speak COVID, to that. And that's what's doing it. Nothing. nothing now, I'll, I'll speak doing. to that. Let, let me. Sure. You're raising a couple of different issues. Give me a sec. So. So in terms of the president's proposals, he's proposing $2.5 trillion in deficit reduction in his budget, which, by the way, is not just uh, tax increases on the richest of the rich, injecting some fairness back into the tax code. It's also cutting spending in some wasteful areas. And meanwhile, you have House Republicans going the other way, proposing $3 trillion in deficit cuts for the richest folks. Now, uh, when you talk about the uh, spending coming down out of COVID, uh, that's definitely part part of the uh, of the story but another big part of the story is that revenues particularly in 2022 came in way above projections and one of the reasons for that was because of the very strong economic recovery you know the unemployment rate below 4% now for about a year and a half actually a little bit longer than that uh, you know that tells you a lot about the strength of the economy and that shows up in higher revenues all right uh, we'll see if that goes I, I did this is a side question to be curious Apparently, they've been investigating this cocaine that was found at the White House, and I, the, the, they can't find the source of it, who brought it in, or whatever. What did you think of that whole thing? Any idea that you might have as to that is how sure that is got a side there? question. I mean, look, I'm I'm here to talk about the economy. Uh, I think we have a, a lot of really important things to report. You know, 12 months of inflation no doubt, coming man. down. I, I don't month mean any after disrespect, month. Jeremy, but that's still cocaine. It's in the White House. It's kind of an important building. Did it worry you when you found out about it? Yeah, I'm not going to comment on any of that because I'm really out here to talk about our economic progress, which, by the way, has to be the thing that uh, Americans, uh, you know, need to hear us talking about in terms of the progress we made in our plans going forward. And when you get to that part, in terms of our plans going forward, we want to build on this progress. And if you look at the investments, key component of Bidenomics, right. if you look at the extent to which our public investments are pulling in private investments, standing up a domestic semiconductor industry, standing up a, 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 an EV battery industry, Industry, electric cars, clean energy products. We're not just making Bidenomics. We're not just talking about Bidenomics working today. We're talking about Bidenomics working in the future. Who and that is a powerful Bidenomics, combination. By the way, Chairman, I'm just curious. So, is it the president? Was you know, it I've heard. I heard the president talk about that, and he said, I think he said he, he, he saw it in a couple of newspapers. I think he might have said Financial Times in the right. Journal. Uh, but I, I feel like I've been saying it for a while, so, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll claim some ownership. I actually think it was you who started it, because I remember I know some time ago. I'm sure it wasn't just me, but All right. I may have been in the mix. Jared Bernstein, very good chatting with you. Again, the uh, White House you, Council you of too, Economic Dan. Advisors, the chairman. He's in charge of all of that at the White House. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis, you will not get it anywhere else.